If you see here properly, again in dynamic style, we have n MOSs or n FETs. This is nothing but n FETs circuitry which is present, and this is exactly the same like static style. Then what did we change? Again, we changed the PMOSs because we wanted the number of NMOS not to be equal to the number of PMOSs or I would say in better words, number of PMOSs not to be equal to the number of NMOSs because we wanted to reduce the area and that's the reason we studied zero NMOS. However, zero NMOS has its own problem. To avoid a direct path between VDD and ground, I connect another transistor below my NMOS circuitry which is nothing but my footer transistor. So this will always be the same this way which is connected to clock and I have replaced my zero NMOS or my PMOS which was always grounded by another PMOS which will also have a circuit input phi. So what we are trying to do is when phi is equal to zero my PMOS will be on. However, when my phi goes to one my PMOS turns off and my NMOS turns on. And what's going to happen here is because the PMOS has turned off, we have seen this in the previous clip how dynamic circuits operate. Here we are just understanding that because my PMOS has turned off, there's no direct path from VDD to ground and hence the power dissipation is less compared to zero NMOS and there's no contention problem. And there will never be a time when my pull up, pull up is this part, will be on and so would be my entire pull down. So this again avoids the problem which we faced in zero NMOS. However, dynamic style also has its own drawbacks which we have studied in the previous clip. They need monotonically rising inputs. What is that? Please refer to previous clips that will give you a lot of clarity. Here it is some sort of a problem and to avoid that problem, what we need to do is we need to take the same dynamic circuit and connect it with a static inverter. Static, we have just seen the static style at the start. So static inverter has to be followed by a dynamic circuit and the general diagram is as follows. So here we have seen in the previous clip, there's nothing but my dynamic circuit where you can easily make out that there is an NMOS logic which is same like in static CMOS or in zero NMOS. However, the pull up is replaced by a PMOS which is not always on unlike zero NMOS and it's given an input phi. And this is nothing but a header transistor. We have seen the dynamic circuit and this is nothing but my footer transistor. We try to avoid the problem we face in zero NMOS. And this output is connected to a static inverter. Static means the number of NMOS is equal to the number of PMOS and this is nothing but an inverter. So when we have dynamic plus static inverter, remember, together we get nothing but a domino circuit. So this is domino. Let's go ahead and see a different style. Pass transistors. Pass transistors are nothing but, we have again seen the drawbacks of pass transistors and what are pass transistors in the previous clip, but the general diagram or the general representation of pass transistors is nothing but, when an NMOS is used individually or a PMOS is used individually, it acts like a switch. Just take an example. If this is an NMOS and it turns on when a logic high is applied, the switch is closed and output will be equal to input. Similarly for PMOS, pass transistor or the transistor passes the input to the output. So it's nothing but a pass transistor. For PMOS, my input is zero, logic zero. So my PMOS turns on and it does nothing but passes my input to the output. However, pass transistor has its own problems. An NMOS transistor, we have seen this in the previous clips, an NMOS transistor cannot pass a perfect one, whereas a PMOS transistor cannot pass a perfect zero. So to avoid this problem, what we study is a new style and that's nothing but transmission gates. 